The familiar study of jet aircraft treats jet thrust with a black box description which only looks at what goes into the jet engine, air and fuel, and what comes out, exhaust gas and an unbalanced force. This force, called thrust, is the sum of the momentum difference between entry and exit and any unbalanced pressure force between entry and exit, as explained in thrust calculation. As an example, an early turbojet, the Bristol Olympus MK 101, had a momentum thrust of 9,300 pound and a pressure thrust of 1,800 pound giving a total of 11,100 pound. Looking inside the black box shows that the thrust results from all the unbalanced momentum and pressure forces created within the engine itself. These forces, some forwards and some rearwards, are across all the internal parts, both stationary and rotating, such as ducts, compressors, etc., which are in the primary gas flow which flows through the engine from front to rear. The algebraic sum of all these forces is delivered to the airframe for propulsion. Flight gives examples of these internal forces for two early jet engines, the Rolls-Royce Avon Ra. 14 and the de Havilland Goblin. Topic transferring thrust to the aircraft The engine thrust acts along the engine centerline. The aircraft holds the engine on the outer casing of the engine at some distance from the engine centerline at the engine mounts. This arrangement causes the engine casing to bend known as backbone bending and the round rotor casings to distort ovalization. Distortion of the engine structure has to be controlled with suitable mount locations to maintain acceptable rotor and seal clearances and prevent rubbing. A well-publicized example of excessive structural deformation occurred with the original Pratt & Whitney JT-9D engine installation in the Boeing 747 aircraft. The engine mounting arrangement had to be revised with the addition of an extra thrust frame to reduce the casing deflections to an acceptable amount. <laughs> <laughs> Rotor thrust The rotor thrust on a thrust bearing is not related to the engine thrust. It may even change direction at some RPM. The bearing load is determined by bearing life considerations. Although the aerodynamic loads on the compressor and turbine blades contribute to the rotor thrust they are small compared to cavity loads inside the rotor which result from the secondary air system pressures and sealing diameters on discs, etc. To keep the load within the bearing specification seal diameters are chosen accordingly as, many years ago, on the back face of the impeller in the de Havilland Ghost engine. Sometimes an extra disc known as a balance piston has to be added inside the rotor. An early turbojet example with a balance piston was the Rolls-Royce Avon. <laughs> Thrust calculation The net thrust Fn of an engine is given by F N equals M A I R plus M F U E L V E minus M A I R V display style f underscore n equals dot m underscore air plus dot m underscore fuel v underscore e dot m underscore air v. Most types of jet engine have an air intake, which provides the bulk of the fluid exiting the exhaust. Conventional rocket engines, however, do not have an intake, so m air is zero. Therefore, rocket engines do not have ram drag, and the gross thrust of the rocket engine nozzle is the net thrust of the engine. Consequently, the thrust characteristics of a rocket motor are different from that of an air-breathing jet engine, and thrust is independent of velocity. If the velocity of the jet from a jet engine is equal to sonic velocity, the jet engine's nozzle is said to be choked. If the nozzle is choked, the pressure at the nozzle exit plane is greater than atmospheric pressure, and extra terms must be added to the above equation to account for the pressure thrust. The rate of flow of fuel entering the engine is often very small compared with the rate of flow of air. When the contribution of fuel to the nozzle gross thrust can be ignored, the net thrust is F N equals M A I R V E minus V 
Display style f underscore n equals dot m underscore air v underscore e v. The velocity of the jet v must exceed the true airspeed of the aircraft v if there is to be a net forward thrust on the aircraft. The velocity v can be calculated thermodynamically based on adiabatic expansion. Topic: <laughs> Thrust augmentation. Thrust augmentation has taken many forms, most commonly to supplement inadequate takeoff thrust. Some early jet aircraft needed rocket assistance to take off from high altitude airfields or when the day temperature was high. A more recent aircraft, the Tupolev Tu-22 supersonic bomber, was fitted with four SPRD-63 boosters for takeoff. Possibly the most extreme requirement needing rocket assistance, and which was short-lived, was zero-length launching. Almost as extreme, but very common, is catapult assistance from aircraft carriers. Rocket assistance has also been used during flight. The SCPR-841 booster engine was used on the Dassault Mirage for high-altitude interception. Early AFT fan arrangements which added bypass airflow to a turbojet were known as thrust augmenters. The AFT fan fitted to the General Electric CJ805-3 turbojet augmented the takeoff thrust from 11,650 pounds to 16,100 pounds. Water, or other coolant, injection into the compressor or combustion chamber and fuel injection into the jet pipe after burning, reheat became standard ways to increase thrust, known as wet thrust to differentiate with the no augmentation dry thrust. Coolant injection cooling has been used, together with afterburning, to increase thrust at supersonic speeds. The Skyburner McDonnell Douglas F-4 Phantom II set a world speed record using water injection in front of the engine. At high Mach numbers afterburners supply progressively more of the engine thrust as the thrust from the turbo machine drops off towards zero at which speed the engine pressure ratio EPR has fallen to 1.0 and all the engine thrust comes from the afterburner. The afterburner also has to make up for the pressure loss across the turbo machine, which is a drag item at higher speeds where the EPR will be less than 1.0. THR UST augmentation of existing afterburning engine installations for special short duration tasks has been the subject of studies for launching small payloads into low Earth orbits using aircraft such as McDonnell Douglas F 4 Phantom II, McDonnell Douglas F 15 Eagle, Dassault Rafale, and Mikian MiG 31, and also for carrying experimental packages to high altitude altitudes using a Lockheed State Route 71. In the first case an increase in the existing maximum speed capability is required for orbital launches. In the second case an increase in thrust within the existing speed capability is required. Compressor inlet cooling is used in the first case. A compressor map shows that the airflow reduces with increasing compressor inlet temperature although the compressor is still running at maximum RPM but reduced aerodynamic speed. Compressor inlet cooling increases the aerodynamic speed and flow and thrust. In the second case a small increase in the maximum mechanical speed and turbine temperature were allowed, together with nitrous oxide injection into the afterburner and simultaneous increase in afterburner fuel flow. 